Hello, everyone. How are we doing? Great. Good morning, Megan. Good morning, Matt. Good, Good morning, morning, everybody. Um, guys, thank you so much, as always, for being on the stream with me. Um, because I invited you, I guess. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank, thank you, regular viewers, for being here. We show up for you every week, and we are so grateful for you guys for tuning in, asking questions, and please always send us more questions. We like to talk about the questions, and we sometimes build whole streams about your questions. So just feel free to communicate with us. Um, a little bit about us, if you are new to our stream, uh, we are Valiant Technology. We are an MSP. Um, managed service provider. We are based in New York City, but we have a national reach. And if you want to learn more about us, please watch our previous episodes. We are on episode 93. So we have a lot of episodes. It's kind of fun to watch our, um, you know, video setups get better and better over that. Over that course. Mostly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, de it's definitely smoother. It's yeah. definitely smoother. Exactly. Uh, sounds, audio is better, I think. Uh, some <laughs> yeah, there, there are a lot glitches in the back where we'd be like someone's echoing what's happening um that's technology yeah. though right yeah and that's what we're here to talk about um exactly and please join the conversation like i said before send write comments on youtube and linkedin and you can also watch our live stream uh via twitter so just follow us at the valiant way um and we see you watching and we we love your dms so please just keep it up um, all right. And then our topic today, DNS filtering, um, which is a, 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 what I understand just like a very important part of the internet, correct? <laughs> it, it's, it, please go ahead, George. It's kind, of the, it's, kind of the, it's kind of the heart and soul of the whole operation, really. Oh. Like it's, it's, uh, it's and, and you know, uh, there's an old joke in IT, an old saw, like uh, it's always DNS. Um, uh -huh. you know, and the more, the longer you do this, the more you kind of roll your eyes when you hear it. I, 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 whenever I hear it, I think of that Ray Liotta meme from like one of the gangster movies with him and like maybe Joe Pesci laughing and yeah. he's like, oh, please just stop it already. Enough. But yeah, it, it is a joke. It's an over, it's a played out joke in the industry. But it's, but, it's truth and comedy, right? Yeah, exactly. But, uh, it's a, it's, it's such a foundational service, right? It's a foundational system. Uh, without it, nothing works, right? Mm -hmm. And if you want, you know, you want to see someone be real frustrated real fast, break their DNS. It's like it's it's uh, and and there's so many reliant, uh, interconnected pieces on it. As and as we get more and more complicated and more and more reliant on these tools, um, DNS becomes more and more critical. So um, I think it's a really important important thing to discuss because a, a good understanding of it, or even at a top level, is helpful for making decisions on if if what should be in your how, how to approach it from a, from a risk or business perspective so and think, George, yeah, well, what does it stand for ah just right. for, for for anyone tuning in who maybe is domain like, hey. name system okay you know this is these are like og um uh, uh acronyms so they don't get complicated it's like literally dns is the main name system like you know like it doesn't need to be complicated um and it's been around for a long time, right? Oh, but, yeah. I mean, it's, it literally was, uh, you know, I'm going to put back, you know, some uh, pointed collars, some bell bottoms, maybe like disco. <laughs> polyester. Polyester. Everyone, there's a lot of synthetics. Uh, there's patchouli everywhere in the air as they're coming up with these acronyms. It was definitely the, the post-60s hangover that is the 70s. And um, oh so, but it, 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 it takes us a uh, step back to the 1970s in Stanford. Uh, it was part of a system of uh, within ARPANET, which was a governmental and kind of public-private research uh, consortium. Uh, but uh, really what it came down to, it all kind of came down to this one text file that every machine still has to this day. It's a vestige, it's the appendix of computers. The hosts, <laughs> all capital, dot text file. So it's a human readable file. That is a basically like a, just a text file, um, and is the uh, bane of many of a young sysadmin IT <laughs> person existence. Because you don't know it, because if you don't know it's there, it can it can be affected, and it's a place for people to attack or yeah. to modify on a, on a workstation or a system. Yeah, and well, uh, what, just really quickly, we'll throw out that it, it, it is also there to be modified for good purposes. Uh, a lot yeah, of yes, I'm sorry. Them to create localized development environments that have uh, some kind of domain name attached. It has, it has, it has like, like the appendix, it has really good purposes. It stores good bacteria for your gut. 
but mostly it can have really bad impact on your system because most people shouldn't touch it. You shouldn't actually ever really touch it because it's unless if you know why you're touching it. So um, I don't know if that appendix thing kind of keeps going with. Touching no, no, it, I've, I've never touched my appendix before. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a weird day. But nevertheless, it's um, a Thursday. But I think let's let's look at it and maybe yeah. this. You know, you said OG, oh, so we're gonna take it back to like you know when Saturday morning cartoons were still a thing. It's like looking up a number in the in the yellow pages. Right. You have someone's name, you find their name in the directory, you locate the number. Correct. It's that in the opposite direction. You're looking right. for an, well, no, no. You actually do have the name that's coming from the number. It is the is the same thing. I don't know why I had to make that more complex. Probably because I haven't but seen there, it. But there, there, like there is years. cases where there are cases where you want to be able to look backwards and look up a number to look up the name. Oh, and that's, that, exactly. but we don't yeah. want to get too deep into the weeds on DNS because it's a deep. It's no, a. Yeah. We'll do another episode where we talk about the different kinds of records because that's that's actually that's a, quite yes that's that's a, that was, I should put that on the list because I think yeah. that causes a lot of confusion for a lot of folks, especially if you're um, doing some side projects or you just want to set up a quick uh, internet website uh, or service. Uh, mm -hmm. these, these things get really complicated, but, um, you know, so the host.txt file, what DNS was developed because after a while, the host.txt file got so big and so complicated that yeah. people couldn't share it anymore because it used to be right. kind of passed around as a, an, on like a, I forgot this, the frequency, but, and if you were, if you weren't in that week's or that month's or that quarter's text host.txt file update Stale data. your service wasn't part of it you you didn't you weren't you weren't visible so in the 80s the dns the core kind of bind dns system was kind of developed um it's 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 a really important system if you're if you're going to be in this field to understand be even if you're a developer or if you're an infrastructure uh technologist um because it's so critical so i think we're going to do a little bit of a demonstration of how it works i would call it a play and uh, okay all right well first of all I, we have to ex explain the roles i i'm i'm chrome chrome nice to meet you <laughs> i crashed hold on i'm back um and i believe george you're going to be the local dns server which I'm is a local, server that would be I'm, inside I'm, of a network that's right i'm local to your network i'm the person that you know, i'm the uh, system or or uh service that you're going to ask the question of and featuring oh. megan hmm. quick as the authoritative dns server uh, which would be a server that sits outside of a much larger network, a larger infrastructure that's in charge of DNS. I'm putting so, them on my acting resume just so you guys can. You, should, you absolutely should. So, right, Chrome. so I'm Chrome. Yeah. So, someone just told me they want to go to thevaliantway.com. I've never been there before. Hey, hey, DNS, what's the IP address for thevaliantway.com? Uh, let me look at my local cache because uh, my local records. Now look at my cache. Uh, I don't have thevaliantway.com in my cache records. I'm going to forward this and ask the authoritative name server what it is. Authoritative name server, what is the valiantway.com? Uh, of course, thank you uh, for asking. Um, the address is 157.245.9194. Have a good one. Got it. Chrome, What's just up? so you know, the IP address that you're looking for is 157.245.9.194. And don't worry if you forget it. Because I have it in my cache for the next 12 hours. Oh, hey, check out this website. These people look like they know what they're doing. They got the whole infrastructure thing and support and security. and You know what? I got to find out where these folks are so I can have a talk with them. I and heard they're, they're New York City. Scene. <sighs> Amazing. <laughs> got it in one. But yeah, we do it live. That's all there is to it. But, yeah. you know. I think that, yeah, that was kind of silly and it was a little bit of fun to do, but. But I it's mean, a good, just basic step by step. Yeah. It is because yes, DNS can be so much more complex. And at the end of the day, it is much more complex when you look at the the, the sheer scope of it and how everything has to communicate and be synchronized. And, right. uh, there's, there's a top down kind of like trickle that goes on. Uh, yeah. But at the end of the day, the most basic example of how DNS works is what we just did. Correct. And, mm -hmm. and the thing is, where it gets complicated really is the scope and scale of how many systems are being managed yeah. and monitored or or, mm -hmm. or being kind of sent back and forth. Think about mobile devices. Think about ad services. Think about everything you're, you're – and it overlying DNS to function. Yeah. And that's why DNS security concerns are really real 
and ones that we want to just go over real fast. We're not real yeah. fast, but give, give them their due, I should say. So absolutely. Let's dive in there. Yeah. Um, thank you, George. So we've established why DNS is so important and how we rely on it so much. But that's also, like you said, what makes it a target for uh, attackers because it affects everything. Um, well, it, it affects everything. I just want to throw out that let's keep in mind that the I think the RFC that made DNS official came out in like 1983. So right. you weren't really seeing the types of cyber security incidents that are happening today. It was built right. at a simpler time when there were way fewer concerns. I mean, like we were I was joking around about it earlier, but if it came out in 83, isn't that the same year war games came out? I mean, yeah, you know, everything was super grandiose and like, ooh, mysterious. It wasn't the real stuff that happens on a regular basis. It was also very it was very esoteric, right? You had a very specialist knowledge. It wasn't, I mean, it was also, I mean, really dedicated more towards research and military usage at the time as well. So, right. I mean, it is sort of, you know, it was isolated to begin with. Um, I think that's really important to say, because I think if we're yeah. going to go into security concerns, it needs to be explained why there isn't a whole lot of security around DNS itself in the first Correct. place. Now, yeah. so, so the, the key, the key server or service in our in, in our example is the one that you always got to be a little cautious about is the authoritative DNS because um, what happens is there's a uh, well, there's a lot of different kind of attacks against DNS or or threats that can impact it but uh, one that's really pretty common is the is called DNS poisoning and with DNS poisoning is is basically changing records in the authority against the will or against the un, uh, un, undesirable change, not authorized. Go back to your RCA triad. Uh, it's, a, it's a change to a critical system that impacts the results. And the, uh, a threat actor can do all sorts of shenanigans. I don't think that's, that's the official technical term for what they do. <laughs> shenanigans. Yeah, yeah, that works. Yeah, shenanigans works. That. But, um, yeah. you know, you, you, what happens is, you know, you, if you change records in the, author, uh, in the authority, then you're going to get a result that is not the official result. Uh, we we see that quite often uh, when people uh, are impacted by malware. One of the first things the malware the actor, which malware would do is change, either affect the host.txt file, mm -hmm. or affect uh, affect uh, the, the if they're attacking the DNS, they'll put they'll uh, impact and change records to to redirect you to a different less the, the, to their desired yes. website. Yeah. I, th I think you can't trust if, anything. Yeah. If, if you can kind of imagine it in your head, if you've got your authoritative DNS server, that one could be fulfilling requests for thousands of other DNS servers. Once those thousands of other DNS servers have been impacted by getting the bad record from the authoritative one, it can spread like wildfire. Correct. So this isn't even a situation where you as a business is being targeted. It could be, you know, an attack on an ISP's DNS servers that are used for like, you know, people at home with their internet connections. Correct. And you think you're going to Facebook and you go to another page. It kind of looks like Facebook. Your browser bar says Facebook. You go to enter in your username and password and someone else has your information. Right. Yeah. It's it, you know there's yeah. there's other attacks yeah. from man in the middle. Um, yeah. there's, there's, there's you also have significant denial of service attacks it's against DNS. Certain, if you correct. can if if enough people get together and start hitting DNS servers with requests flooding them, they will not be able to respond. And the inability right. to respond to a DNS request means that the person that's making the legitimate request is not going to get to where they want to go. Right. And we're simply we're simplifying this this for the stream, but is a pretty complex uh, topic and one that a lot of cybersecurity researchers or authorities are very fearful of because it was it's very it can be very difficult to 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 protect it because as Matt said the original DNS RFC came out in uh, I think it was 83 83 84 I mean it's had some significant upgrades especially when in relation to IPv6 uh, which is much more complicated string hexadecimal versus uh, octets, but mm -hmm. functionally it hasn't changed that much and it's still as it can be very susceptible. So there's a, there's a DNS sec, um, uh, proposal out there or draft, mm -hmm. uh, but many people don't use it because it's, it has a certain kind of complication, uh, authorization, which can make it more difficult. So really, honestly, uh, at this point, what we think is, uh, and maybe in the industry as well. Is, is putting in place a authoritative DNS filtering solution in place. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we can walk through that. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I, DNS filtering is is not something I've, I've worked with extensively over the years, but having been exposed to what some of the companies that we work with offer, it's, it's, it's a great tool. I mean, 
I think we often like to talk about building concentric circles of security around a business. You, right. you, 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 having a moat is great, but you want a moat with a barbed wired fence, with an electrified fence that has some really hungry dogs between it and another fence, and, and, and some lasers. You know, that's what we're archers, going for. Like on archers, the, yeah. some boiling oil, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe a crocodile or seven. We're playing Are Kenny you, G at, on like a 2000 watt speaker, you know, at each corner. That would drive people away. That's well. That, that's that. Well, yeah. I guess that would be everybody. But anyway, I guess I went too far with that example. But the fact, the point is, is that you don't want to just say like, "Hey, I've got antivirus," or "Hey, I've got a firewall." You want to be able to cover all of your bases, especially yeah. the ones that you don't know and the ones you don't necessarily have control to, over. Like we said, cool. an authoritative DNS server being attacked can lead to a lot of problems for you, and that's not something you could look at and fix yourself. Also, also we see. I mean, just in a configuration item, you know, many people will, especially as they work from home or they're working from jump spaces, Starbucks, mm -hmm. uh, mobile devices, um, that DNS may not, it could be one that's a publicly facing DNS, it could be impacted, you're not exactly sure, you really want to have some control or visibility into the how you're getting results from a, from a, from a, a known good authority. That's exactly. really important. If, if you can't um, be completely confident in the data going from point A to point B without being modified or being incorrect at point A, you make sure that you're filtering out to to remove a lot of risks that you you and your company would be subjected to. And um, yeah, you know, let's. You want to, George, talk a little bit about the DNS filter? Yeah, it's just, it's, 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 it's some good, uh, Matt, you, you built some really beautiful kind of you know pictures yeah. with a thousand words. So I think we should walk through them with the, the diagrams. Yeah. So. So, so here's the here's yeah please George you go ahead and drive yeah much like we said before you know the internet advice is looking you know we're kind of looking for uh, you know the we're looking for a, a server or looking for an address and so uh, in this in this example here uh, you know the device is connecting to mm -hmm. uh, to the without you know imagine the filter is not there and uh, forwarding uh, things to a public DNS filter the attackers you know, potentially impacting it. And, and, you know, they are, um, you know, they request that they get the address of the attacker goes in there, makes a change, um, especially the public one, because they're maybe more susceptible. And then, and then what's happening is if that change is made, the D, the DNS filter service will recognize that that is not an authoritative change. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, it'll, and it will block or warn that those are not, that's not, it's not a legitimate, um, DNS. The other function that we don't really have a, di don't have a diagram for, but it's equally uh, important is that if an attacker does gain access to a system, they're generally using DNS or systems that rely on DNS to get out. And by using a, a, a robust DNS filter with known, you know, that is constantly managed and updated and with, with known bad uh, sites it, or known bad attacker like repos and there's a little command and control systems. Really, what you're trying to do is you're, and, and this is why I think the real beyond just the filtering and or bad requests, which is just as important. Mm -hmm. This is just this is equally as important. Is that you're breaking the attack chain of an attacker. So you know I have a system that's been attacked. It may you know and maybe we localize it because you know we see a filter, it pops back. Hey, we have an alert. This is going. This is this thing is connecting to uh, a site that is not legitimate, or it might just block it completely. That's that's you know. So the militia, may, the, the militia attacker may have access, but they can't do anything with it because they can't control it, right? Because the because they can't connect back for the commands, and that's a really important thing. And and and, and I think that the other piece that's important is that if you're ever looking to filter content in your office let's say you uh work with a lot of children you might want to you want to prevent them from connecting to you know pornographic or uh you know or even or even you might not even want I'll them to vulnerable, to, to, vulnerable or you may not even want them working on tiktok you, you, you might want to you know, take it a step further and say they can't get to anything with the exception of these approved sites that are related correct. to whatever they're doing with you guys i mean look i i worked at a nonprofit that that served high, like middle to high school age children and we had a business center that was dedicated to them. Everyone had their own logins. Everything was beautifully set up. And the internet was completely disallowed with the exception of partner websites that had resources for them. And right. you could do the same exact thing with the DNS filter. Right. And, and DNS filter, and it, it, it's, it's, it's another tool in the tool belt to allow that, to have that, to have that kind of deeper management of a system. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and once again, it's not a 100% surefire thing. There are a number of workarounds around it. People can, yeah. if they have, uh, you know, administrative access to a machine, they can change the DNS. Mm-hmm. Um, they can, you know, if you're on a laptop, you start, you change it, you know, you shut off the network and reconnect to a phone or a hotspot. There's a mm-hmm. lot of ways you can do it. But in a corporate network, particularly, uh, you, it's a great way to lock down the, lock down that kind of, that, that method of attack or mm-hmm. uh, that way of getting out to sites you don't want people to get out to. Mm-hmm. It's a little, once again, in our hybrid world, which is here to stay, it gets a little more complicated. So a lot of times what we, what we, what we see done is uh, install a DNS agent on every machine. A DNS agent then can be used as part of a uh, overall uh, remote management solution while people are working from anywhere. You know, that's been our mantra for a long time. We know we kind of have that mm-hmm. idea that people can work, people are and will going to work anywhere they can. Uh, it's it's an amazing part of modern life that I think that we should so, totally enjoy. Um, we and, should enjoy, and, and we enjoy. have to enjoy it safely. I think that's the big part Correct. of it. And and tools like this are, are unobtrusive. They don't require steps from the user. In many cases, you don't even realize it's there. I mean, we're, we're running it for ourselves. And I, you guys ever notice anything? No, no. We, we've been using it for months. Uh, we actually deployed some systems and and ourselves and some various clients. Works for months. Works great. Um, yeah. And it it and once again, it becomes as part of an overall strategy of of, of protecting yourself because you know and and, and I have to go back to our tabletops, which is my one of my favorite topics. But it, it should be discussed in your tabletop because what happens if our DNS infrastructure is compromised? Right. How do we ensure that our DNS comp- the DNS infrastructure is not compromised? I think that you have to look at it as what happens if what happens when there's compromise of any of our core services. Look at right. it as like your body. What happens if there's something wrong with my circulatory system? What happens right. if there's something yeah. wrong with my site? What are the impacts? How is that going to change right. my quality of life? And you can yeah. equate that to uh, productivity in the workplace. Mm-hmm. Right. And and you know, and kind of put it, you know, wrap up a bit. It's 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 a, it's a great way, it's a great very cost-effective way of protecting systems. And really what we want, you know, and, and the thing is um, with, it, it just becomes part of the overall, as I said, the overall, you know, strategy and put it together in a way that, hey, we're talking about each contingency and how they overlap and interlock with one another to give mm-hmm. a better And now, once again, it's not 100%, because nothing mm-hmm. is, but it's, if you can, if you can stave off or protect yourself one another month, another month, another month, another year. Yeah, yeah. It all adds up because that's that's time that you're not battling, uh, you know, breaches. Well, it's it's you're not battling breaches. Yeah, you're not downtime. dealing with loss of revenue. You're not dealing with hits to your reputation as a business. There are a lot of things that can go wrong. And, and I think that, I, and 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 one of the things that I this not not the I'm monologue for a second here. So give me a minute. But I think that you know we're kind of wrapping up our cybersecurity kind of mm-hmm. month we're going to go next month is some really interesting more business focused topics but i think that many business owners or business leaders don't don't necessarily understand the emotional impact of a breach or a or a loss of data would cause their business yeah. um, just seeing yeah. it firsthand for over the years of doing this kind of work mm-hmm. it's really stressful for people it's 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 almost it's it's the uh digital equivalent of someone breaking into your house Trashing yes. your trashing your your, yes. your, your, your private you, space. You walk away feeling violated. Correct. By what's happened? You look and, over your shoulder. There's a certain amount of paranoia that comes into play. Correct. And honestly, I mean, I've I've been through that type of experience at a past workplace. I had a boss who was completely completely paranoid for months after we had a situation that he inadvertently caused, and ultimately he got up and walked away from the job because he couldn't handle the stress of it anymore. Correct. And, and that's what these situations lead to. I mean, like, I think you see a lot of stuff online with statistics of what happens and dollar values and everything else. But there is a bit of a mental health component to this as well. I mean, I, I, I've known I've known business owners. I said just working with folks over the years. It, it's really it's really impactful. Mm-hmm. And if we can, you know, put in place uh, systems and tools and and and, and thoughtful uh, prevention to work together, because and I want to say we're not going to ever stop. It's like you can't stop crime. No. You can't, you know, it's just going to happen. People, the people will find ways to do these sort of uh, nefarious activities. But um, if we can do our best to a, a, do, uh, as much prevention as possible and then add on top of it um, preparedness, 
Um, I think that's a competitive advantage for any business. And also, you really just don't want that emotional hit. Of, no. You know, you're trying. You know, considering all the other things that we've been dealing with in, in our society today, with the pandemic and all the other other pieces of it. So I think that it's it's a it's a really important thing. And I think people beat the death of cybersecurity. And there's a lot of vendors out there, who, a lot of people out there talking about it. But I think I think that it really has to be boiled down to a, to how is it going to impact people, business wise, and emotion and, and personal yes. and, and and right and from an emotional mm-hmm. perspective mm-hmm. because. Yeah. It's really it's it's so critical, and you know it it, it could ruin it could ruin you as a leader. It could ruin your business, um, and and that is the last thing that I think anyone really wants. So yeah. I think that you know putting in place some some good solid thoughtful uh, preventions and preparedness is, is the key. And the the art the <laughs> yeah K- Kenny, we're gonna get the the clarinets out there. It's gonna be yeah. a whole big thing. But... <laughs> Sorry guys, I got, I got a little heavy yeah. there for a second. But I, I, it did, but. If we added it to our pyramid um, in our graphic, just putting like security, Kenny G, the like Kenny G model, I think that would be. There here. is. Exactly. You know, you, yeah, you, you kind of, you, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't exactly say you monologued. When I hear the word monologue, I think of um, The Rock and, and Be Cool when he does his scene from like Bring It On. Yeah. But no, what you're saying is very valid. And I mean, look, at the end of the day, yeah, we, we're a tech company. We manage networks for people. People. That's yeah. the part that's important. If Correct. the people aren't able to function or do not trust their technology, nothing gets done. Exactly. And you have right. to work with both the people and the machines to do this type of work. And and and, and uh, as a final note, it's not a victimless crime. Yeah. That, that's I think there's a there's a misconception out in the world that is a victimless crime. But I know yeah. a lot of folks who have been very badly impacted and it's not there's, there's definitely a victim. There's definitely people who are victims and um and uh, who will uh, have a very strong and long lasting impact from being affected by these things, by these kind of events. So everyone, George, everyone yeah. so wrap, <laughs> wrap it up. Sorry guys. I'm no, sorry. No, no, no. I, I think it's like, I, I'm so glad you said that. And I'm actually so glad you said it as we're wrapping up our cybersecurity month. I think it's important to remind people, I think cybersecurity can seem dry sometimes when we talk about it. And because there are a lot of just basic things you can do to protect yourself but I think it's really important that we hit on the, you know, the real core of why we do it. So thank you, George. Yeah. Um, and everyone, we're wrapping up our stream for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and if you enjoyed today's stream, please hit that thumbs up button or give us one. It, you know, we like seeing it a real one. And uh, if you have any questions, again, for topics, send us a message uh, or fill out our online question forms. Yep. Subscribe on YouTube, keep up with our live streams and other content on there. We have other things produced by other members of the team. We have a knowledge base that just has a lot of simple how-tos that are really great. I use them. Um, They're really good. Yeah, they are. Uh, Be sure to visit The Valiant Way to learn more about our services. And guys, Matt, George, thank you so much. One last thing. I just want to give a shout out to Matt. Matt's going to be working with one of our uh, kind of good friends in the industry, uh, Ninja One, they're doing a great, yes. uh, a great little show called the IT Horror Fest, about horror stories of this kind of work. Um, we uh, we love just uh, it, they become part of the uh, overall, uh, I'd say, uh, fabric of your career. Um, <laughs> when, I, when I speak when I speak to a lot of IT folks, uh, I, I always love asking them, "What was the worst day you ever had in IT?" Oh. And you can learn a lot from someone about that conversation. It's a great conversation starter. You know, I, I have some great ones that I've done, you know, or just bonehead moves or just bad things happen. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's it's really, it's, 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 and once again, it's never, it, you know, things, bad things will happen. It's how you respond to the bad thing. Right. It's more valuable than the, than the blame shifting right. kind of thing. I think it's really important. So, um, but yeah, this is great. I mean, as a, service is a real important topic to, to us as a, as a company, but I'm really excited about our next sequence, which is about preparing yeah. for 2022. And it's gonna be a really great, I think it's gonna be a really good sequence. I'm, I'm psyched to work with you guys on it. So it's gonna be cool. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you guys so much. Do, is Matt, did Matt get frozen? Matt, I think Matt might be frozen. All Matt right. Be, all right. Well, all right. There it is. We're, we're so going to end the stream and uh, have a great day. Thanks. All right. Megan. Bye George.